these, uh, these disciples with Jesus, as the day wore away and night came on, said, Master, send these people away. It'll be night directly. and You've got nothing out here in the desert for them to eat. Send them away. Send them away that they may buy themselves victuals. Anything to get them out of our sight. Let's, let's be away. We'll have a panic here. We'll have all these babies crying for something to eat. And their mothers will be helpless to pacify them. For we have nothing to eat out here. And he said they need not depart. What have you got? Oh, they said, we've got five loaves and two small fishes, very little fishes. What are these among so many? Well, you bring them to me. And he invoked God's blessing upon them, and the multiplying power of God came down on the five loaves and two little fishes. And then he gave them to his disciples and said, pass these out to these people. And all were fed, and twelve baskets full were gathered up of the fragments. Some five thousand men beside the women and the children. Oh, this is the way God does it. We are following a divine savior, a divine savior. We're not following some clever man simply. We are following a divine savior who can turn the very darkness into morning, who can turn death into life. We are following a divine savior and we're to act as those apprehensive and conscious of our great heritage and destiny as the friends and servants of Christ. Now look at the two ways proposed here to handle these people out there in that desert. The disciples look at their way and then look at Jesus' way and see which way, way, which way we are going to try to take. The disciples came to him and said, Master, the night's coming on. It's nearly sundown now. And presently we'll have the greatest panic ever seen in this desert. These people will be hungry and they'll manifest their hunger. Send these people away, these thousands. Get them away. Bid them go quickly that they may buy themselves victuals. Any way will take care of themselves. That's the way they propose. Send them away. Don't face it. Don't face it. Shut your eyes to it. Stop your ears to it. Run away from it. Don't face obligation. Don't face it. That's a, that's a terrible behavior. That's Satan's suggested behavior for all of us. Don't face it. It's too much anyway. It's unthinkable. It's unreasonable. Get away from it. You take a train and get away. Get in your car and ride away where you won't hear them crying for bread. Get away. Don't face it. That's the selfish cry of men and of Satan. Don't face it. Don't face it. It's, it's the ostrich-like method. They tell us the ostrich rushes away and puts his head down into the sand and, and doesn't see, refuses to see. Get away. Don't face it. Just absent yourself. Withdraw yourself. Don't go down that road. Don't come into contact with that situation. Decline to face it. Decline to hear about it. Shut your ears to it. That's the proposal of the disciples of old. It's proposed all along. They said we can't do it. We can't do it. Jesus said, how much have you got? How much food have you got? Why, nothing to speak of. What are the five loaves and two small fishes? What would that be among so many? Well, you, we'll see. You bring them to me. Why, they said we are utterly unable to do it. We are utterly unable to do it. They left out any thought of God, of his divine power, of his divine power, left it all out, left it out any reckoning or computation of divine reinforcement. And they pleaded inability, and because of that, let's, let's get past this very painful chapter for the present and get something more comfortable and more pleasing. It's the same old story down the years. There was never a great work proposed for Christ that somebody didn't say it can't be done. 